Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to drill these little depressions so that we can embellish our ornaments with some beads. And the first thing we're going to do is pick the right size drill bit for our beads. What I have here are three millimeter little gold ball beads. And I had found out that a 7 sixty-fourths bit works well for holding the bead in place and it gives enough room for glue to sit in there. And what I did with my drill press is I put a zero clearance table, I call it. I just cut a piece of wood the size of the table and taped it on. It's not high tech and it gives more stability for when you're drilling holes in fine projects where there won't be as much tear out and it's not as awkward as having a piece of wood underneath. And I set my bit so that it just barely touches the table. This is a brad point bit so the tip of the brad will barely touch the table. And you always do a test to drill. Now see that didn't go through and make sure the bead fits in which it does so that size bit will work fine. Now for my pattern I have cherry wood approximately an eighth inch thick and I put a layer of blue painters tape over it first and then I sprayed, I applied spray glue to the pattern and stuck it to the wood. This way when I'm done cutting all I have to do is peel off the tape and there's no residue or mess left on the pattern. So once our drill is set we're going to start drilling out the small holes. We're not going to do the entry holes for the cuts, just the round ones where the beads are. for you because you don't want to watch that but um, you could see the drill did not go all the way through but there's enough room there for the beads and the glue. Okay we finished drilling all the places where beads were supposed to be. Now I'm going to drill the regular entry holes and on these comma cuts I call them comma shape cuts. They're like comma strokes in painting. I want to drill right at that rounded edge. I reset my drill so that it goes all the way through. And as you can see, this will support the back without having a messy board moving around behind it. And I line up my bit. I'm just going to continue to drill on the bottom of the commas and then on, on the rectangular areas sort of in the middle and closer to one edge instead of right in the middle and you'll see that when I cut the reason behind that. So continue on and finish drilling. Okay, I finished drilling everything, and as you can see, the commas all have holes right at the end. For these larger, elongated areas, I went sort of toward the wider end of them, not towards the skinny end, and I'll show you why later on that too. And before we go to the scroll saw, it's very important that you sand the back of your piece. 
because there's tear out even with the table on there, the zero clearance table, there's a bit of tear out and that'll make your piece tilt a little bit on the scroll saw and you don't want that to happen. It'll throw off your cutting. So just a quick sand and we're ready to cut. All right, we're ready to cut now. And I'm gonna start with one of the comma strokes and show you how to do that. What I have here is a two-aught reverse blade which means the bottom inch of the teeth are pointing up and that allows cleaner cutting on the back side as well as the front. Now I thread my blade and I'm going to cut the inside part of the curve first and then I'm going to go backwards and then cut the outside part. It's very easy. Go back. Very slowly and carefully meet up with the first line and you could see it makes a nice comma stroke. We'll do that on the other side. Same thing. This is the way I cut all the little curves like that. This is actually quite an easy piece to cut. It looks very complicated but the cuts are pretty much straightforward. There's not a lot of spinning and curls and things like that, so it's not really a difficult project for somebody who might be newer to scroll sawing. And same thing. The next thing I'm going to do is this long section in here and since it's a long line here that tapers we want to come in from the thicker part first kind of like I showed you on the classes if you haven't seen the classes go to lumberjacks and look in the links here and you can see how to cut corners I'm going to enter from one side, turn around, carefully follow the line to the end, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see. And then without turning the piece, just go up the other side. And lead up. It's very easy to follow that line. You're not really moving around too much. We'll do the center line the same way. We're going to turn our piece around and back in, finish the first side, go backwards, and finish the second side. This way you, you don't have to turn in the corners and you have nice clean sharp edges when you're finished. And I'll show you the other side. And what I like to do is I like to do the side with the least amount of curves first because it's easier to back out than if you're going in a lot of corners and turns. Sometimes they're almost equal, but if you have a choice, go on the easiest side first. Go down to the corner, back into the hole. Turn. Cut 
your first side. Back it out. And when you're in the corner, just turn it a little. And continue. Okay, and you just continue to cut out the inside first and then cut the outside when you're done.